I remember when I was younger, I always thought that there were so many more talented people out there to whom drawing comes so easy. But is there something like talent and what if there is and you aren't one of those gifted people? Before diving into that topic, a quick disclaimer. I am very busy with a lot of things and I didn't have the capacity to work on personal stuff like this YouTube channel. But I wanted to record a vlog kind of video initially, but all I've been working on when I had the time to draw was a commission that I can't show you, but I'm very happy that I have. So I thought I would record two warm-up sessions and a small amount of doodling around. So for this video, get your sketchbook or tablet or whatever it is you like to draw with and let's draw together. So first of all, what do I mean when I say talent? What is talent? The Cambridge Dictionary defines talent as someone who has a natural ability to be good at something, especially without being taught. The first thing that comes to my mind are children who tend to be better at something than other children. There are kids who notice that they can run faster than others. Some can hit the notes while singing better, and some may draw smoother circles than everyone around them. Personally, I think that there are indeed people who are talented. But I don't think that talent makes them good at whatever they are doing. I think talent is something that helps them to pick up quicker on things. For example, if a child is good at drawing, then they may have a better observational skill, which could then help them to notice things better and quicker. If you teach child A, who is considered talented in drawing, and child B, who isn't considered as gifted in drawing, you will probably notice a different speed of learning and executing what you just taught them. Therefore, child A could improve a little bit faster, but is child B doomed to never be good at drawing? Honestly, I don't think so. Talent will only bring you that far. I think talent gives child A a head start, but in the long run, it all comes down to practice and effort. I've seen so many people who are talented, but then stop drawing and making art, or they simply stop practicing the fundamentals, and so they stopped improving. So, if child A stops working on their skill set, they will also stop improving. While on the other hand, if child B is consistent with learning and understanding what they are doing, they will get better and better over time. Knowledge and practice is the only thing that makes someone really good at something. There is no shortcut, even if someone has a head start because they are quote unquote talented. So in the end, I personally think talent is the rate at which you can execute what you just learned in a specific field. I think you probably already heard of the learning curve. If you haven't, then here is an image. You can improve a lot in a short period of time. In the beginning, by learning the fundamentals like holding a pencil, drawing the right way, learning anatomy, and so on. But at some point, that fast growth will flatten and you will find yourself on a plateau. This is when you will reach a point where you have to put in more work for smaller improvements. But the important thing is, you will still improve steadily over time. You just have to stick to it. Talent may help you to climb the first part of this curve faster, but at the end of the day, everyone has to put in the work and effort in order to learn. I also don't think that someone is talented in a general topic. For example, I don't think that there are people who are generally talented in making art, even drawing. There are so many different huge topics and things that you need for drawing 
And trust me, it would be amazing to have a head start in every single one of these aspects, but I don't think that that's how reality works. There are artists who are naturally better at observing and then putting on paper what they are looking at. But then they may struggle with understanding what they are seeing in three-dimensional forms. There are artists who are amazing in understanding human proportions and they are very quick at learning the anatomy, but then they may struggle with fluid gesture drawing or exaggerating things. Or an artist might find them naturally drawn towards painting flowers and then once they try to paint a human face, they end up totally overwhelmed and completely lost. But luckily, we all can practice our weaknesses and work on our strengths. Sometimes I heard that people also connect liking to do something with being talented, but I don't think that this is true at all. I have met many people who were good at drawing, but really didn't enjoy doing it, so they didn't practice. But at the same time, there are many people who love doing something or are drawn to something that they aren't as talented in doing as they are in other things, which is totally okay. For example, I love singing and every time I'm at home, I sing basically when I listen to music, but oh boy, I just can't hit those notes. It sounds terrible and I'm very glad that nobody has to hear me except for my boyfriend and he <laughs> had to get used to that. But I still like it, so I do it and I am not talented at all. But I know if I would take singing classes, I would probably improve at least a little bit and sound maybe a little bit decent. What I don't like about the word talent at all is how society dismisses hard work and effort by saying that someone is talented in something because they are good at it. You won't believe how many discussions I had in the past where people literally came up to me and told me, oh, you are so talented. I wish I could draw like you, but I can't even draw a stick figure. And every single time someone tells me that, I reply the same way by explaining that this is all hard work and not talent. And you won't believe how many people try to argue with me that that isn't true. But I have the proof. <laughs> I sometimes even show them my shitty art from when I was 13. And they still try to tell me that I am as good as I am right now, purely because of talent. Even though it takes away all the hard work and effort I put into drawing, I see those conversations for what they are. Not an insult that I should take personally, but an excuse for them to not work hard for something. To dismiss what they want to do or learn by telling them that they aren't talented and therefore there is no need to even try. But the truth is, the grind is hard but necessary. And if you want to be good at something, well then you have to grind it. In the past, sometimes I looked at other artists that are younger than I am or the same age as me and I started to compare myself to them. I remember that I looked up to Night Song, for example. I still love her so much and I admire her art. And sometimes I remember I compared my skill to her quote unquote talent. If you don't know, she started being a professional when she was around 15 years old. And that sounds insane. And at first you would probably think that she is just a talented genius. She is very talented, but not in the way that you might think. She started learning art, I think at the young age of seven or nine, if I remember correctly, from a personal art teacher. And that is very impressive. I think being able to wrap her head around anatomy and muscles that young is something that not everyone can do. But she wouldn't be where she is right now without the work she put in throughout almost her entire life. I just learned this recently about her in an interview that blew my mind. I will leave you the link to the interview in the description down below. It is very inspiring and also motivating, so go check it out if you're interested. What I want to say is that yes, there are talented people out there, but everyone can become a good artist. I am convinced that all you need for that are, first, 
the resources to learn from, and second, the motivation to do so. If you don't like drawing, then obviously you won't feel motivated to learn and grow. I mean, you don't even need expensive art supplies, just be motivated to learn and take up challenges and then growth will come. When I look back at my art from when I was younger, I am so glad that I never gave up because I convinced myself of not being talented. Looking at my art from when I was younger makes me feel so inspired to continue learning and in doing so, growing. And now that I think about it, maybe I should continue the series of my older sketchbooks. I started to show the oldest drawings chronologically in a video, but because it didn't seem as if people were interested in it, I wasn't sure if I should continue this. But I know how these things can motivate me, so maybe I should give it another try and maybe motivate another person to continue their journey. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the drawings you can see on screen. The first few pages were all timed one minute drawings. I tried to focus on my lines and the gesture itself and it took me a long time and a lot of practice to finally be more confident with my lines but now I am having more and more fun with those very straightforward lines even though they can be quite intimidating. I used line of action for my references in this warm up and if you don't know what line of action is it is a free source where you can not only find all sorts of references, but you can also work in different modes. You can choose between a class mode or a time practice. For this warm up session, I chose to draw everything in the same length. And after 20 one minute poses, I felt like drawing one face with a ballpoint pen before continuing to work on the commission that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. The next day, I decided to record two doodles in my sketchbook because that was everything I was able to get down after my warm up and work. But at least I drew something and I also thought about recording it, so that is a huge win. I challenged my drawing from imagination once again, but well, I mean, I ended up drawing only two faces, but it is what it is. And I also used that drawing session to cover up one drawing that I just couldn't stand looking at. The next day that I drew, I decided to warm up with drawing animals. I think I can't tell you too much about the commission, but I can tell you so much. I need to draw animals. And I am not too good, but also not too bad when it comes to drawing animals. I'm just not used to it. So I wanted to practice them while simultaneously getting warmed up which is very convenient. I just love how pages look when you use different color pencils, so I wanted to have fun with that on the spread. The sketchbook that I'm working in here is actually the sketchbook that I want to fill mostly from imagination, but every now and then I just want to comfortably draw from reference without thinking too much. Also, I wanted to decorate <laughs> the cover of the sketchbook, but oh boy, did I mess that up. I didn't like the way it turned out and then I wanted to wipe it away while it was still wet and now it's a total mess. <laughs> I will show you an image in the video right now if I remember, but I wanna paint over it. Maybe I will do that after editing the video that you're just watching. I love the way the reds, the blue penguin and the otter turned out. Those sketches look very dynamic and confident and a little bit more stylized, but still realistic. I just love them. The one drawing that I struggled with the most was the raccoon. I tried to see if I could fix it and so I put a post-it on top of it and I drew over it. Although I think it made it look better, it still doesn't look too good, but I tried and I learned. I think I just struggle with drawing raccoons and I should maybe go and practice that if I ever feel like designing a raccoon character. You never know. Also, the raccoon face that I drew in blue pencil looks very off as well, but it's okay. In general, I had a lot of fun with these warm-ups. If you are interested, I could do more of these warm-up with me type videos. I am very interested in hearing others' opinions on this topic. But that's it for this video and I will see you next time.